Welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of the Beyond Normal Podcast. We got a very special guest today. We're switching things up. Uh, you know, typically we would have a founder on and highlight their amazing uh, journey uh, starting their business, uh, but we do know that there, there there's other individuals, there's other players in the space uh, that are out there helping founders run their business, giving them opportunity, creating amazing tools. And so uh, I want to bring to the stage, uh, you know, my family who's doing some incredible, incredible things uh, in the startup space, supporting founders, giving them the tools. So without further ado, I want to bring my, my, my fam, Obi Akapuda. Um, he is working currently for Microsoft for startups, and they're, they're, they're doing some amazing things with some, some cool tools out there. I want to bring him to the stage, allow him to share his story. He's got some cool things that he's been working on outside of his day. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Ascentum, which is an award-winning coaching practice that helps high-performing professionals advance and achieve the promotions and pay they deserve. Ascend to powerful heights with Ascentum. Hey, job. And so without further ado, let's bring him to the stage. How's it going, Obi? Man, peace, peace. What's going on, Ken? Appreciate you having me, uh, you know, you know, being able to uh, hop on the platform and, uh, you know, share your story. You, you're doing some incredible things. Uh, so, with you know, I want to dig right into things. Tell folks a little bit, right, before you got this opportunity at Microsoft for Startups, like, what were you doing? I know your story, but but shed a little light for the folks listening in. Yeah, oh, that's that's a great intro. I'll jump right into it. And so, uh, I, I guess the, the a better follow-up would be just how far we're going back, right? Uh, again, I think that uh, I feel like the better part of 10 years, the last 10 years of my life has been dedicated, you know, to what I'm doing now, right? So um, I don't think it was just one of those things where I just popped up, decided to say, hey, I want to go work for startups one day. I want to get to Microsoft. Um, there's been so many things. It's been such a journey. And one day I didn't even expect to get to this point, ultimately. Um, if you would ask me 10 years ago again, like I would think I'd be on the other side of things in terms of just you know, being a founder, being a day-to-day founder. So, um, but again, uh, all that being said, just uh, what I was doing beforehand, great question. I, I would say I, I could take it back to literally, uh, man, where are we starting from? Let's let's say 2016, 2017, um, without giving you guys like the full, full background again. Um, so I was in school at the time and was, you know, figuring out like just like every other like college you know junior at the time or co- rising senior at the time like you know I-, I was looking what everybody else was doing trying to get an internship so um funny enough microsoft was one of the internships i applied for um heard back from them so i got past like the preliminary rounds um and you know ultimately just didn't you know just didn't happen for me so didn't didn't land the role i probably applied to like you know over 100 internships that summer um and did, i didn't get one like so i got, we got like a couple of interviews but for the most part, like, you know, none of them really were, you know, going anywhere. So I think that was like my first real real chance of just, you know, betting on myself and becoming a founder. So again, it was myself um, and two of my homeboys, I was, you know, you know, we went to school with back in the day and um, I knew him from Raleigh too, from back home. So um, it, it really all just kind of made sense. And we were all pretty young in terms of what we were trying to do as far as, um, you know, kind of learning. I think just like, like I said, 2016, dating, dating it back a few years again, like uh, the tech scene wasn't as, uh, as open as it is now, especially, to, you know, people of color, I think that um, it was still a little bit of gatekeep, uh, you know, gate kept in that regard. But uh, I think for us, you know, and for me specifically, I just found, tried to find a way to, you know, get my foot in the door. And so uh, I started off just being a founder. So we, we were building early products. And so uh, I taught myself how to code, you know, maybe uh, 2012, 2013, uh, which is a whole other story we can get into. But uh, just using that knowledge and using that, um, just really the curiosity uh, of it all to really figure out, okay, well, I'm not getting, a, I'm not getting my fair shot out there. Um, so um, how can I make my own shot? How can I make my own you know, opportunity? And so I, I say that story because again, that honestly where I was prior, even prior to coming to Microsoft a couple of years ago. So again, um, I was working, I was working another corporate job as a consultant, uh, wasn't really happy with what I was doing then. Um, and so I, I went back to what I knew best, which was building products. And so, um, built a couple of automation products, a couple of SaaS products, um, software as a service, you know, for, you know, not to, you know, buy gap down with its technical jargon and everything like that. But uh, that's what I was doing. I was building products. I was learning. I was uh, figuring out, you know, what was what was the next best thing I wanted to build um, and what was the next adventure. So 
Um, I think all that combined, and again, my experience of being a founder led me to Microsoft and specifically Microsoft and startups and what I do now today. Yeah, appreciate you, you breaking that down over there. A couple of things as you were talking, like you mentioned, not necessarily having a clear path um, and trying to figure out internships and doing all those things throughout college. But then you mentioned you threw something out there, which I think was a nugget um, around 23. 2012, 2013 is when, when you were first introduced to coding, like in some form or fashion, right? So right. tell folks, because as we were growing up, it wasn't necessarily like always a conversation that we had around like, hey, I want to work for Microsoft. I want to work for Apple. So what were the, like what was happening that was drawing you into at least experimenting with it at a young age? And, 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 and you know, how do you feel like that, you know, gave you some inspiration to, to apply to companies like Microsoft in college? I think, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I always think about what was the first time I really like, you know, got introduced to it. Because, again, like that wasn't our, our wasn't our background. Um, again, like, you know, even like how we grew up, you know, what I'm saying uh, just for the audience out there, like, you know, you get you mentioned like <clears throat> this, is, you know, we family. So, again, this is my big cuz. So, again, like even from that standpoint, from a generational standpoint, we never really had too many, uh, I guess, visible hours. But I will say I will know and I'm gonna give him a shout out because. Um, shout out to Uncle Kevin because, um, oddly enough, he was like the first person um, uh, to kind of introduce me to, I guess, the life of technology. So he does more so on like the networking side. And I remember uh, my dad. So, again, my dad was an entrepreneur growing up. So, again, like always had his own businesses. And so I think that's where I kind of got the whole idea of like being a founder and kind of running my own operation. Just seeing that again I, and again, like just having that autonomy. And my dad always preached about that as well. So. Um, that was the first time as far as technology and coding itself. Um, so I went to Southeast Raleigh High School, which, again, is a magnet high school in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'll say about like my sophomore years, like the first time I actually maybe thought about like, you know, oh, this is pretty cool. But I took I think I took like a uh, it was like a computer. I can't even remember the name of the class, honestly. But I just remember we did like we wrote like a script in, in PowerShell at the time. And for me, I was like, you know, I didn't even pay much attention to it until maybe like. 2012, 2013, um, which is when uh, the, the Facebook movie came out. So it's called social, uh, social Network. And it was basically a dramatization about how Facebook was started. And, you know, I, I guess like, you know, the again, I want to emphasize the dramatized version of, you know, how Facebook was started, and how Mark Zuckerberg, you know, created the idea from his dorm. And, you know, at the time I'm 16, 17 and, you know, I'm reading the story. So I'm doing my background on I'm like, oh, the, the guy's like, you know, just a few years older than me and like, oh, I didn't know that the, the creator of Facebook was, you know, just a few years older than me. So it, it, I think that was the first time I saw tech is like, oh, this is, this is something cool. This is something big. And, you know, um, just use that again as curiosity. And again, I think there was a scene in the movie when, um, I don't know if it was, uh, Dustin Makowitz's character, who was one of the co-founders of Facebook. I don't know if it was his, his character in the movie. I can't remember which one it was, but he was writing something on the board. And I remember I literally stopped the movie and I was like, what is he writing on there? Um, and I want to say it was like a, a script of PHP code, which again is a program language that is ancient at this point. I don't even think people use, um, except Facebook, ironically enough. But um, again, I think that was the first time I really said like, oh, like, let me let me look into this. So I literally went on Google, you know, went in and just, you know, searched about, you know, PHP and I saw a whole bunch of other programming languages. And I was like, oh, this is stuff I was doing a couple of years ago in that class. And I think when it started clicking and I was like, all right, you know, by the time I got serious, serious about it again, like I, I, I dropped it off for a couple of years. I wasn't really serious about it. You know, I was going to school and then uh, my second, I think it was like my sophomore year, um, my own UCG, I was like, yo, you know, I'm going to pick this thing back up and I'm going to figure out like, I'm going I'm to pick up where I left off because I say I started it maybe like my senior year, but I wasn't serious and wasn't disciplined enough, more importantly, um, to really follow through with it. But um, looking back at it, I always say like, man, like had I have, you know, continued even from like first time I was introduced to it, um, who knows where, you know, my, my skills, my acumen would be. Um, and again, I think that, uh, but again, just being self-taught and just being, you know, a self-learner is something that always kind of pushed me to just, um, I know, you know, I'm not going to be as polished as others around me, but that was something that mm -hmm. wanted me to, you know, wanted me to, you know, uh, be more creative and allow me to be, uh, you know, just, I guess, think outside of the box a lot more. So I think all of that kind of coupled up to, Again, me just, you know, where I started from as far as like, you know, just learning how to code and how it led me to what I'm doing now. Hey, that's 
that's awesome. And, and, and again, you, you, you're throwing a lot of elements out there. Um, just because you don't necessarily grow up, you know, with the, the, the straight line kind of pedigree or story, right? There's bits and pieces, like you mentioned, your dad, who I'm familiar with as well, being an entrepreneur literally your whole life, right? That's a big deal, right? And you're figuring out how, kind of how to take those tools, like kind of how to t- take those seeds and then imply, apply some of the technology that's in the current day. And so that's the kind of the, the evolution, the transformation that we're seeing with a lot of businesses, a lot of stories that are being told by people, right? They may not necessarily understand all the tech, Right. But they've got something from a that's an entrepreneur kind of spirit like it, it, it's in them. Right. For them to own their own business and kind of wear, be, be willing to wear all those hats. Right. That, that come with being a founder. And so that's the incredible part of the story. You know, as, as you know, I know you've listened to some of our previous episodes. You know, there, there really is power right in the stories that the, that, that the founders that we have on tail. Right. Sure. And so. Along with that story, right, there's all these amazing, great tools. The tools, at, like you said, the programming languages, they come and go. That doesn't matter as much, right? People want to buy from you. They want to buy your story. And so, yeah, I appreciate you coming on my platform again, you know, as family, but then as a former founder kind of, you know, sharing and shedding light on, on some of the work that you've done. But that said, you know, tell folks a little bit about your, your experience as a as a founder that first time when you started your business with your friends, yeah. like, what was the, like what was that business about? Like, what did you learn going through that process of, of being the boss? Man, it, it was, it was such an experience. And I, I, I always think back to those moments because um, I was so young. I think, you know, I started it at, at 20, 21 and, you know, they were a couple years younger than me. So we're all, you know, none of us are even 21 yet. And we're, we're trying to figure it out quite figuratively, literally, you know, and, it all started with, you know, just from a general interest. Like, I, I think I was like posting me doing some coding on Snapchat, which is like, yeah, I'm dating, I'm dating this right now um, back in the day. And so I think one of my, my homies, you know, he saw it. He was like, yo, like I, like, I started dabbling into coding too. Like I started learning about it too. I, I noticed in high school. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like we should definitely chop it up about it more. He was like, yo, like I got an idea. Like I'd be having so many ideas. And so in me, I was just the same way. I was like, yo, I got so many ideas. I like, you know, we could, I could build this, like, or we, we could build this someday. And it's just like, it, it really all just started just from like an idea spark. And then ironically enough, his roommate at the time, he was, you know, he was also um, like an aspiring engineer as well. Um, I think he was a, you know, information systems major, at, you know, in school. So, uh, but again, they're a couple years younger than me and I didn't know his roommate, but he was like, yo, like, this is cool. But yo, like, you should see my man's like, he, he know more than me. You know what I'm saying? He like, he nicer to me. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, yo, bring him on. So, Literally the first night we got like, uh, I want to say we it was like on the seventh or eighth floor in the library. We literally just sat there for hours, um, just ideating like, yo, like, you know how they built Facebook? And we were like literally going through just, and now that I'm thinking about it now, like that was an ideation phase. That was a, you know, that was a brainstorm. That was like, uh, you know, road mapping. It was so much elements. And again, this is eight, seven, six, seven, eight years ago, which we had no idea what we were doing at the time. Um, but, you know, from that, we are just like, you know, we just needed an outlet. And so we, we named it, I named our company Trap Code, which was literally the whole idea, which was uh, we wanted to build products for, you know, for early stage companies, because again, you know, we knew that even back then we understood that uh, there's such a, a disparity in terms of, you know, not only found, you know, black founders and founders that look like us, but ones who were technical and being able to build those products too. Um, and again, having access and having that mobility. Um, and then we saw all the stories. We did all the research in terms of like, you know, why do most companies like, you know, fail or, you know, what are, what are some of the big reasons why companies, you know, have trouble really getting off the ground? And, you know, large part of it was technology. So we made a vow like that wasn't going to be us. Like we were going to, you know, we were going to upscale ourselves. And again, mind you, at the point, we're all self-taught. Like none of us, like I think, you know, again, one of them was an information systems major, but I was a business major. So again, like, but again, I was super general with it. So. Uh, we took that just idea as far as like an idea spark and say like, if we have ideas like this, imagine some like, like so many other people around us. So you know, where it kind of got around like you know campus in the area, like yo, like these three dudes, like you got an idea, like they can at least help you like prototype it. So you know, we were building everything, like we were building you know like a, a AR sneaker app at one point. We were trying to build a social media app. 
um, back in 2016, which is, I guess, the, the, the social media app, funny enough, um, was supposed to be like uh, essentially what like Clubhouse and uh, what like Threads or like a Twitter is today. Right. So, again, we we even back then we were thinking about community. We were thinking about, you know, people's interests. We were thinking about demographics. We were thinking about um, segmenting. You know, what I mean, we were thinking about so many different things about customers like. Um, just about their, like I said, a big thing was community and we had no idea. We had no formal training, you know, and we just made it work. And so those were the days. And I, and again, I've, I've, I've worked, you know, with, you know, series C companies, I've worked with billion dollar companies, you know, and I've, I've had the, you know, the, the fortunate opportunity to, uh, work with some of the, you know, some of the even most premier, you know, companies that you see and we use every day. And I, I would say, this experience is so much different than the experience back then. I feel like the experience back then in terms of just being so raw, being so young, being so um, just hungry again, right? Like we didn't even know what we didn't know. And I think those are some of the best times, again, staying up until three, four o'clock in the morning, trying to figure it out, you know, helping each other, like get through like, you know, uh, like, you know, a, a coding issue or a, a bug fix or something like that. Like that was something that all pushed us. And again, we all learned. You know, I wasn't I wasn't a, I wasn't half as good as engineer as I was before I came, you know, before you know we started Trap Code. And I learned so many other things, which, again, my other co-founder was more of like the product designer um, and more so of our UI, UX UI guy. And again, I learned, you know, product design from him. I, I was picking up stuff from him. So um, I think that was like our crash course again um, with uh, really upskilling ourselves. But on the business part, again, we worked as consultants. We were helping early stage companies, we were helping um, local companies in the area as well, you know, whether it was, you know, web applications, um, you know, first, you know, those we were building those first MVPs for people. So again, like if they wanted to build like a full scale prototype to where they have like some type of capability, if they wanted to show it to an investor, we can get you to that part. Um, you know, and we were, you know, we were planning to try to uh, expand, obviously, in operation to say like, okay, let's, let's, let's try to widen our scope, right? You know what I mean? But at the time, I think we were all three of us were at a crossroad, which was figuring out, you know, do we know enough and are we confident enough in ourselves uh, to keep this going? Or do we feel like we need to go learn a little bit from from the corporate area? And, you know, at the time they were graduating school. So, um, you know, I, I, I totally understood why they, they took the route of saying like, hey, like, let's go. Let me go figure out, like, learn the corporate way. And me, I was a little older again. So. I had already been in this, in this mindset, but again, even I got to a point where I was like, you know, I, I don't know everything. Right. And as a founder, I feel like, you know, the best founders I see are the ones who are able to fill in the gaps by upskilling or outsourcing, or just, you know, you know, figuring out like, you know, which ways can I, you know, get incrementally better in those, in those weak spots. So for me, it was, um, it was, the, it was the operational side of things. There was so many other things where I felt like as a, as a leader, as, as a CEO at the time, again, like, there's so much I didn't know. Right. And I was learning everything on the fly and I, I'm thankful for the experience, but I'm also thankful that I understood like, Hey, well, let me go learn first. Um, let me go be a developer on a real team for, you know, for, for a company or for a corporate, you know, for a corporate um, organization, something like that. So it was, it was a learning experience, but again, I think just the, the peer like curiosity and just like the, the, the fun and the thrill out of it, I feel like those are some of my best times. And again, like, <laughs> We were barely making enough to like even pay our rent, you know what I mean? But again, like it was, it didn't even matter about the money. We 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 had everything at the time. We felt like we had it, we had it all. So uh, it's, it's it's interesting because again, like a lot of times people think that the, the great times are the best times of your company is when you know you're raising all this capital or you're you're, you're hitting these metrics and these these gaudy KPIs of saying like we we've, we've done this. And um, but again, like I always tell people, just appreciate the, the early days and. Um, you know, appreciate the early the, the, the process as well. So because, again, the early days, those those are going to be distant memories. And, you know, you'll never be able to get back to those points. And, and it only gets harder as a founder. Right. And it only gets you know, adding more on the plate. So uh, but again, all just a great experience. And I think I'm thankful for that being my first you know, experience as a founder, being so young, but having to figure so much out. Because, again, even at that time, there wasn't there was no chat GPT. There was no any there, like AI was like still being dabbled in as far as like from a from an open source, like everyday use standpoint. Right. So again, like, you know, everything was like, just kind of figuring out like the hard way, reading a lot of books, you know, watching a lot of videos and just kind of just, you know, being a, a sponge and a student of the game. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And 
And uh, a couple things that, you know, that popped out for me as you were, you know, talking about the, uh, the, the founder journey you and your friends were on, like, just because you don't know everything, right, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, explore it. Um, we've had founders on, they've talked about their failures. Um, if you're not failing, you're probably not a founder, right? For sure. And so uh, that's one of the things that's, that, that's a highlight. But then it sounds like you learned a couple things that you feel like you were able to take into your, your you were able to take into your corporate um, experiences. So talk a little about, talk a little bit about um, what your current role is at Microsoft for Startups, what Microsoft for Startups offers to businesses of all sizes and, and, and how you're able to, you know, take some of, take, take some of those things that you learned or even some of the experiences where you failed into this amazing opportunity that you have in front of you. 1000%. So again, like, so my position is a, a program manager for here for Microsoft startups and I work for the founder experience team and essentially taking the top, top down. Um, think of Microsoft obviously as the big organization that everybody knows, but uh, within Microsoft is, uh, within within our cloud ecosystem is Microsoft for startups. And about three years ago or so, it was formerly something else, a, you know, a few years ago before uh, called BizSpark, but they formally rebranded and uh, really were committed to, one, how do we technically enable the, the, the founder? And more importantly, um, how do we just help and guide them along their startup journey? Because again, like it is a journey, right? And again, uh, it's, it's non-linear for one, and it, it's, it looks a lot different from everybody. So again, like their their biggest challenge was how do we create a program or an entity that's going to help empower founders at scale, right? So what's probably the best way to do so? Build a product. And so thus came Founders Hub, which is our flagship uh, product that we use. And essentially that is our CRM. That is our home base for our founders. So again, um, the way it, it serves is as uh, almost as a base where, you know, you can utilize our benefits. Um, we have... Um, in addition to first and third party benefits. So again, your open AIs of the world, um, GitHub, LinkedIn, as well as, you know, uh, Azure, which is again, you know, something that, you know, for founders is going to be super important, if, especially if you're building on cloud digital products. And so um, again, we, we were able to do that, you know, at a, at a tremendous scale. I've been here for about a year and a half and, um, you know, to taking, you know, to put into context, we started, uh, I think we did our GA this time like last uh, February, March area, uh, time. So, so we were rolling it out at, at different points for different groups, but I think it was our GA was around February of last year. And so what we did since then, have, we've, we've onboarded at least over 40,000 companies. So, um, and, and that, that speaks values in terms of how we're able to do that at scale, because again, we're, we're doing this with a global company. Um, as you can imagine, that's different ecosystems. So we're not just talking about, you know, you know, startups who, who, who are based out of the Bay Area or from a certain region, like we're talking about from a global, global scale. And as you can imagine, there's so many different, you know, pockets. So with, with my role in my organization within Microsoft Startups, I work for the founder experience team. So um, again, if put in perspective, if you're starting a job, what is one of the, the first things that you're going to do at a company um, before you even start real work, before you, you know, uh, you kind of get the lay of the land, you're probably going to do some type of onboarding. So again, that's, pretty much, you know, what, what I'm in charge of. And we run a program called New Startup Orientation, which is pretty much, um, it's all it's all in the name, which is really enabling and empowering founders to understand not only what we offer um, as far as our benefits, but more so um, how to leverage it, uh, more so how to navigate and just really completing their, their experience and rather than just saying, okay, well, we're going to give you a boat ton of credits or we're going to give you a boat ton of uh, benefits and offerings and you know, have at it. You know, we definitely want to make it an all engaging experience. So um, it's something that we're able to do one to many. Um, so I lead the sessions and I also, you know, just pretty much um, empower our other, our other teams to, you know, give out the same type of uh, presentation um, and roll it out to different, you know, segments of founders all across the world. So um, it's something that, you know, I, I would say it all makes sense because again, I, when I'm giving these presentations, when I'm doing this, this work, not only if I'm doing it from a PM standpoint, I'm in their shoes. People I'm talking to are me. So I, I think I have a different affinity than someone else would, you know, who maybe has just been an engineer or maybe it's transition or, you know, uh, you know, come from another organization. So uh, I think, again, my experience as a founder wouldn't have, one had, wouldn't have led me to this position to begin with. And I think that would allow me to have the insight 
um, and the empathy that I do have towards founders. So I think that uh, my work and the way I approach it is a little different than most people, because again, um, I've not only have I been a founder, I was just in their shoes not too long ago, maybe two years ago. So again, like, um, it's almost like my way of paying it forward. How can I do this at scale? So uh, I've been, again, doing this for a year and a half. And um, in addition to, you know, working with, with New Startup Orientation um, and founders, one thing I have a super affinity for, obviously, um, are, you know, founders that look like us uh, and more importantly, underrepresented founders. And so that that is something where, you know, I go up the bat for, you know, and that's something I really, really and trying to just, you know, you know, spark a change in not only the organization, but just, you know, here in my, my, my personal ecosystem um, here down here in Atlanta. And luckily, again, I'm I'm blessed to be in a, in a really growing and dope ecosystem with so many founders that look like myself. And so um, it was that opportunity as far as like um, we had a you know brand new location, you know, from a corporate office opened up down here and just seeing that and seeing how the ecosystem was already building as far as the founders um, and, and just, you know, everything else, the startup scene around it. I felt like this is the perfect place to be. And so, um, you know, it, it just all felt like the perfect match. And I think, again, all of that is to say that, you know, my experience of being a founder, my days of being with Trap Code, my days of, you know, learning how to, um, again, just navigate the, the waters of being a founder have made this role um, almost like a perfect match and made this, this my time in Microsoft um, one to definitely to remember. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Um you know, how you're able to take, uh, you know, your past experiences and, and there's still value for corporate America, right? And a company like Microsoft, that doesn't just cater to one segment or vertical of customers, right? They're, they're, they're catering to customers who are really big, but then there's also startups out there who are really small and they're trying to be nimble. And so what better company to partner with than Microsoft? I'm curious, like, how would a company go about leveraging starting to leverage and figuring out, you know, what tools Microsoft or startups like has for them that they can tap into. Like what's that, for, what are those steps that they can take? For sure. I would just urge everybody, um, shameless plug to uh, check out startups.microsoft.com. So um, you can just literally Google startups, uh, from, or Microsoft startups as well. Um, any key search would probably bring it up as well. But again, that's startups.microsoft.com. And then from there, um, not only you'll be able to read, you know, meet more of our docs and meet more of our information. Um, there's plenty of information on YouTube um, as well. So I can drop some of my links as well. Uh, but yeah, first steps from there, sign up. And again, it, it is free. So again, uh, I will I will note that with some of the, the common misconceptions, the common questions that I get, FAQs rather, uh, are one, does it cost me anything to sign up? And two, what's the catch? Um, <laughs> and those are always really, you know, really interesting to hear because again, right. It sounds too good to be true. And you know, that old adage of if it sounds too good to be true. It usually is um, something that we take, take pr tremendous pride in, um, you know, and like a, other, you know, many other of our, you know, other companies out there is doing as well. Um, I won't say that I won't sit here and just say that, you know, we're, we're the only people with doing this. I will say that we do it, you know, at a very, you know, special and, you know, unique rate that you won't find anywhere else again. Uh, but all that being said is, you know, we're here to empower you. And we understand that the startup journey is very long. Again, like like you mentioned first, like there are startups who are, you know, early stage who are just now kind of figuring out their companies who are, you know, well making, you know, a lot of a lot of revenue and, you know, have maybe have a, you know, a lot of customers that are growing at that point. But uh, we understand that it's 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 very nuanced and we want to be able to meet you at any point, meet you where you are. So the first step is signing up. Um, and again, before you even do that, just like I said, take take some information, or excuse me, just go, uh, you know, take a look on, you know, on some of our docs and visit startups.microsoft.com, learn more about it. Um, I'll drop my, my socials in there as well. So if you have any questions about it, uh, offline or anything like that, I'm more than happy to answer them. Appreciate it. Is, is there anything I'm curious, as you talk to founders, is there anything that's like an underlooked piece of value for a founder who's starting out and they're trying to figure out what the tools are like, is there any place that they can go and get that first quick win to realize the value of the program? Yeah, for sure. So again, like um, check out startups.microsoft.com and we should have our FAQ there. So again, we have a link to, and I can update it. So if you want to edit this part out, so, cause we literally just changed our website up like two days ago. Um, but yes, check out the website and there's plenty of information up there as far as our FAQs. Um, on my LinkedIn page specifically, I have a lot of information on there as far as some of the videos I've done on startups, or, or excuse me, on Microsoft Startups and Founders Hub itself. Um, but yeah, as far as like, you know, how to get how to get started, um, I would just say the best way to figure out or best way to find out is just really just, like I said, 
uh, visit the website for yourself, sign up if it looks good for you. And the worst thing you can do is, you know, you know, not like it or, you know, so if it's not for you, you know, feel free, like I said, to ask me any questions about it. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's free to all. Um, I will note that there are some, a couple of ramifications as far as like, um, you know, obviously we, you know, we want to be able to help every company. Um, but obviously one, one of the bigger things is you do have to be a digital company. Um, you don't have to be incorporated. You don't have to be like super later stage. Um, if you have a name and if you have, um, you know, an idea that you have, you know, you know, at least have some type of traction with, you know, we're able to work with you. And again, so the, the cool thing about it is that once you log, once you sign up for Founders Hub, um, you're placed at one or four levels. So level one being um, our ideation phase and then four uh, being like our growth phase. So again, your private, you know, you know, later stage growth stage. So, um, and again, everywhere in between is where we'll be able to help you with the benefits. And the cool thing about it is that um, we understand that different needs are, are going to be, um, they're going to be different needs at every different point on uh, every milestone of the startup journey. So um, you're able to unlock more and, and get more capabilities and get more access to the benefits as you're um, leveling the program. Um, but all, again, all of the leveling and all of this um, is available online. So check us out on LinkedIn as well. Um, we have plenty of information about it. And, you know, again, hit me up on LinkedIn or any on socials. I have any questions about it as well. Appreciate that. Um, I know folks will definitely take you up on that. You know, you know, in closing, definitely want to pass it to you. Uh, thank you for coming on. Always good to have family on sharing their story. Um, I've watched you, you know, uh, progress from from startup founder to now you're in corporate. Who knows what you're going to be doing next, what that next opportunity looks like for you. Um, but I'm curious, like, you know, I want to throw it to you one last time. Like, what do you want folks to to take away from the conversation? Like, what's that? You know, as we as, we, as we've had all these these thoughts come up around your journey and, and how you're helping other founders with their journey. Like what's your folks remember um, as we close out? Ah, man, uh, two things and two, two, two things I really live by um, one being chances make champions. Um, and another thing, no risk and no biscuit. So, um, and, and again, I don't, I don't mean uh, throw everything on the line or, you know what I mean? Or, 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 or you know, put your, your, yourself in a, in a, in a terrible position. But the biggest takeaway behind that is that, um, one thing I always wanted to operate as under is, uh, did I, did I go for it? Um, I, that's one thing I, I can't live with is, is, is the feeling of just not being able to go for it. I can live with things not going my way. Um, again, I've been a founder three times over. I've had companies that, you know, I, I've, I've won startup competitions. I've got funding. I've squandered money away. You know, we've, we've, I've had to, you know, shut businesses down. I've had to really fall on my face again. Um, and, life was the best teacher. And so those two things, but again, it didn't stop me from going, you know, going again. So uh, two things, chance to make champions and no risk and no biscuit. And ultimately, um, you know, there's power in your process. So don't ever underestimate it. Uh, the book of life is not linear. So uh, the one thing I've, I've realized is that, and I had to learn over the years was just because my journey isn't going a specific way or my, my, my process is going a specific way doesn't mean, you know, all hope is lost for that things may not end up the way I wanted to. Again, if you were to ask me two or three years ago, would I be in this position now? I, I probably wouldn't have seen it coming. And I, I, it just, it just, it didn't register in my mind. Obviously I had a, a different path that I felt like I was following. But again, the cool thing about life is that, you know, the, the detours that we feel like that were, that were, you know, that were put on in life sometimes is really leading to the better destination or a destination that, you know, preparing you for the next milestone. So, um, you know, take it all in stride. So those those are two again, those two quotes I live by, chances to make champions and no risk and no biscuit. I think that I'm, I'm a firm believer, especially if you're if you're a founder, you don't have time to be, you know, to be to be timid. You don't have time to be um to second guess. I think that, you know, the fa the, the good founders I've seen are the ones, you know, that I guess play by the book and that, you know, play things safe. I think those can make good founders. I think the great founders, you know, the ones who you know build great things, are the ones who who take risks. I think you know that that's that's something I'll live with. And again, like whether you're in the corporate world or whether you're in, you know, uh, you you're, you know you're on a founder journey. I think that there's so many parallels in terms of just you know being daring and uh, trusting your instincts. So those two things, I, I, like I said, I, I'll really leave it off with. Appreciate that. Um, glad glad to have you on. Um... You know, we, we have many conversations off, right? But this is a good place to have. I'm glad that you were able to share your story. 
that folks know about some of the amazing things Microsoft for Startups has to offer. We'll make sure we put that in the show notes so folks can make sure. sure that they tap in and get some of that value for their business. Like you said, it, it, it's worth you know signing up and, and, and at least exploring what's out there um, as a business owner. It's always good to have access to more resources. Um, outside of that, you know, want to thank uh, the listeners for tuning in to another great episode of the Beyond Normal Podcast. Appreciate it. One love, man. Appreciate you again, KG.